In today's Jolly Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be taking a look at these five sequences and determining which ones are graphical, as in which ones are the degree sequence of some graph. Now, there's a very powerful theorem we can use to determine whether or not a sequence is graphical, but we're going to use more elementary methods just to get a good feel for some basic ways we may determine whether or not a sequence is graphical. However, we will sort of introduce the theorem for our last sequence and we'll prove it in a future lesson. So if you need more of an intro to degree sequences, check the description. There will be a link to my lesson introducing the topic. Recall that the degree sequence of a graph is just the sequence of the degrees of the vertices of the graph. To make it unique, we may require that the degree sequence be non-increasing. So here we've got five non-increasing sequences. And of course, if we have a graph, it's very easy to write its degree sequence. You just write out the non-increasing sequence of its degrees. Write its degrees in order from greatest to least. It's considerably more tricky, however, to look at a sequence and determine whether or not it's graphical. So let's get started trying to see some ways we might do just that. Is our sequence S1, 6, 5, 5, 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, is S1 graphical? Is it the degree sequence of any graph? One way we might check is by counting the number of odd degrees that this sequence has. S1 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 odd degrees. That means if this is the degree sequence of some graph, then when we add up all the degrees, which is just the sum of the terms of the sequence, we would get an odd number because however many even degrees there are, they will add to an even number. Since there is an odd number of odd degrees, they will add to an odd number. So the total sum will be an odd number. But that's not possible. Because remember, if we add the degrees of a graph, it will equal two times the number of edges, which is always even. So there's no way that S1 is going to be graphical. It's not the degree sequence of any graph because it has an odd number of odd degrees. If you want more details about some of that stuff I just said, I'll leave links in the description. It's all about the first theorem of graph theory and a simple corollary stating that every graph must have an even number of odd degree vertices. Now, what about our next sequence, S2? We may perform the same first check, counting up the number of odd degrees. S2 has one, two, three, four odd degrees, so maybe it's graphical. We're not sure yet, but it passed that test. So maybe we'll start to draw a graph that we can force to have this degree sequence. We know that we need two vertices of degree three. Maybe we'll try and put those vertices here. And we need two vertices of degree two. Maybe we'll put those here. Since both of these vertices need to have degree two, we might join them to the two vertices that need to have degree three. And that takes care of the vertices of degree two. They both now have degree two. The vertices of degree three right now just have a degree of two. So to fix that, we could join the vertices to each other. Now these two vertices have the required degree of three. All that's left for our sequence is two vertices that have degree one. And hey, that's a piece of cake. We just add two vertices and join them to each other. This is a graph that has this as its degree sequence. Three, three, two, two, one, one. So since this is the degree sequence of some graph, it is by definition a graphical sequence. Now, what about our sequence S3, seven, six, four, three, three, two. Is this sequence graphical? Well, if it is the degree sequence of some graph, that graph necessarily would have one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. Because remember, each term in a degree sequence represents the degree of one vertex of the graph. So the number of vertices in the graph is the number of terms in the sequence. 
But if this is a degree sequence and the graph thus has six vertices, that means each vertex in the graph can only be adjacent to at most the other five vertices in the graph. But that means there's no way that we could have vertices of degrees seven or six. So there's no way that the sequence S3 is graphical. And let me go through that one more time. Once more, this sequence can't be graphical because if this vertex has degree seven, then it must be adjacent to this vertex and that one and that one and that one and that one, but that's all the vertices and it's only five. So there's just not enough to have a vertex of degree seven, nor are there enough to have a vertex of degree six. How about the next one, S4, 3311? Is this sequence graphical? Well, it passes the number of odd degree vertices check there are one, two, three, four vertices of odd degree, so maybe it's graphical. Additionally, the maximum degree in this sequence is three. It has a total of four vertices, so that's also acceptable, but it's still not a graphical sequence. How can we be sure? Well, let's try to draw it. If this sequence were graphical, then since it has four vertices, each of the degree three vertices would have to be adjacent to all other vertices of the graph. So maybe here are our four vertices. Here are the two vertices of degree three. Since they both have degree three, they each have to be adjacent to the other three vertices of the graph. And do you see the problem here? These vertices of degree three being adjacent to the other three vertices of the graph forces these two vertices to have a degree of at least two. So there's no way that we're gonna have these two vertices of degree three in a graph that has four vertices and then have the other two vertices with degree only one. Just by these vertices having degree three, these two have to have a degree of at least two. There's no way we can have those two degrees of one, and so this is not a graphical sequence. Let's move on to the final one. The sequence S5 is 5433 222111. You could apply a couple of our basic checks we've been using and see that this sequence passes them all, but it's pretty long, so it might seem kind of difficult to try to construct the graph that has this degree sequence. It's just got so many vertices, so seems like that might be a little tricky. Is there a more basic, easier way, a foolproof method that we could use to check whether or not this sequence is graphical? Well, let's use some magic. Let's use a theorem that we haven't proven yet. This theorem that we're gonna use tells us a way to determine if a sequence is graphical based on whether or not another sequence is graphical. Here's how we do it. Identify the maximum degree. In a non-increasing sequence, that will of course be the first term. And we've written all of these as non-increasing sequences. And it's crucial for this theorem that your sequence is non-increasing. You gotta make it non-increasing to apply the theorem. So look at the maximum degree, the first term in the sequence. We're going to remove it in this case, it's five. So we're going to remove five, and then we're going to subtract one from the following five terms. One, two, three, four, five, that would be all the way up to there. So we'll remove five from the sequence, subtract one from these terms, keep these the same. Four minus one is three, three minus one is two, three minus one is two, 2 minus 1, that's going to give us two ones, and then we have the rest of the sequence, 2, 1, 1, 1. Again, we removed the maximum degree, 5, from the sequence and subtracted 1 from the following 5 terms. Now we've got this sequence, we'll swap this 2 with this 1 just to reorder it into another non-increasing sequence. So here's the deal. This sequence is graphical if and only if this one that we just obtained is graphical. 
Now, maybe that's not tremendously helpful. This still seems a little bit complicated. The beauty is we can just keep applying the process that we just did. If at any point in applying this process as many times as we can, if at any point we identify a sequence that we know is graphical, we can be sure that all the previous sequences were also graphical. Additionally, if at any point we get to a sequence that we know is not graphical, that means all of the previous sequences in the process were also not graphical. It's like a beautiful, simple algorithm for determining for sure whether or not a sequence is graphical. So let's apply the process again to this sequence. Identify the maximum degree, in this case three, and then subtract one from the following three terms. Two minus one gives us one, two minus one is one, two minus one is one, and then we have one, two, three, four, five ones after that. Now at this point, we can definitely stop because this sequence is pretty easy to determine is graphical. It's just a bunch of ones. How many ones in particular? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones. Any sequence of an even number of ones is graphical because we can just take half the number of terms in the sequence. So four, one, two, three, four, the graph consisting of four edges and their end vertices is a graph that has this degree sequence. These are eight vertices that all have degree one. So indeed, this sequence is graphical, which means this sequence is graphical, which means this sequence we were originally interested in is also graphical. That's the power of this theorem that we're applying. Again, we'll talk more about really introducing the theorem and its proof in a later lesson, so I hope you'll subscribe so you don't miss that. And again, if at the end we had obtained a sequence which definitely wasn't graphical, that would mean this isn't graphical and this isn't graphical. So it's a beautiful if and only if theorem. And that's just a quick look at how we can determine whether or not a sequence is graphical. So I hope this video helped you understand some of these cool concepts. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you'd like to help support Wrath of Math, I'd really appreciate a small donation on PayPal or a small monthly pledge on Patreon. I'll leave links to those down in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the jolliest math lessons on the internet.